If you want to start your streamer journey or create content in 2025, but you don't have a lot of budget, then these new SE webcams might be the perfect solution for you. Because I'm also a broke mother. As someone who's been streaming for over seven years and has had to deal with the older webcams that sucked, and as someone who was balling on a budget to where I showed you how to get a second monitor for under $4, I snapped at the opportunity to be able to try out these new webcams. And low key, they honestly surprised me. These two brand new webcams are the Obsbot Tiny SE and the Meet SE. You may have seen my other video covering the other Obsbot cameras, but these are now the budget-friendly versions of those powerful webcams, which means they took that same awesome technology in the more expensive ones and shoved it in here to make it more affordable for people like us. So you know we like that. Since you know we're out here drinking those generic sodas, this one happens to be Aldi's Diet Cola, because you know I'm not paying that brand name price. So let's take a look at these bad boys and see how they actually look. Starting with the Tiny SE, this is what it looks like right out of the box. Everything's on auto and I haven't changed any of the settings this is simply plug and play. Not bad, right? It's a PTZ webcam, which stands for pan, tilt, and zoom, which means that I can use this little view gimbal and I can go and look around my room. You can see my dirty living room. You can see, obviously, the kitchen behind me, kitchen streamer. You can see my soda and my 10-pound sack of potatoes right there mixed with my, well, I don't know what that is, like 20 pounds of jasmine rice. If you know, you know. Since it is PTZ, that means we have the AI tracking as well. So if we just turn on normal tracking here, it's going to scan for me. And then if I want, I can go and it'll follow me across the room all the way over here, all the way over here. And it'll just basically follow me to where I just walk around. And if you notice that little thing up there, that's a skylight that I put tinfoil over because otherwise it would ruin the lighting in my room for when I film. It's a nice budget workaround if you're catching the theme of this video. So cheers to that. It's got a bunch of different tracking modes like upper body, so it'll just track your upper body. It's also got close up, so you can close up if you want. They have headless, so basically it'll zoom in on your tits. So if you're one of those streamers, well, you know. They have lower body if you want to, you know, move over to the uh, the Patreon alternative. I guess uh, Obsbot's got you covered there. Kind of weird, but hey, you know, everyone's got a different income source. I got to respect anyone with the hustle. And then if we go over to the More tab, we also have the gesture control. So you can turn it on and off by holding up your palm. It'll flash on the camera. And now... We're locked in, so it's not tracking us no more. We also got the zoom. If you do the L, you can go zoom in, or if you want to zoom back out, easy peasy. And then they also have the dynamic zoom as well. One of my favorite things about these cameras is that they have preset mode. So after you've done like tracking and everything like that, all you got to do is just grab this little gimbal. Since it is PTZ, you can kind of bring it wherever you want. I think that, let's say if I wanted to have a shot where I'm sitting on the couch, I'll add this little preset button here, click that. And so I'll go back to my first preset, which is my YouTube shot here. But if I want to go to couch, preset two, easy peasy. So you can switch between them very easily, especially after you've done this normal tracking and it doesn't necessarily end back to where you were. I just hit the preset and we're back. Now, very interesting and weird thing about these two webcams is that they can both do 1080p 100 frames per second. Yeah, 100 frames per second. I have no clue who's actually going to use that, but I just thought it was an interesting perk and that it was even possible to do it considering these budget price points. Now, you might have noticed that I said 1080p and that's because in order to make the price lower on these webcams, they actually changed them from being 4K to 1080. However, for streamers like myself, I'm already having my 4K webcams in 1080p mode because I stream at 1080p. So really that didn't even matter because most places you stream to, you will be streaming at 1080p. So it really didn't matter. And if you thought the 1080p 100 frames per second was weird, you can also do 720p at 120 frames per second. No clue who's going to use that, but you got it. But taking a look at some of the settings and just see how this performs, you do have a couple different shots. You have wide, medium, narrow, and you can reset it to the original perspective. So obviously on top of my computer, it is not lined up, which is why I have the preset here and snaps in, which is why I like the PTZ. It's very useful. But if we move to the image tab, this is where you're going to change the actual quality of the camera. Now, personally, I would never really mess with any of the image settings, possibly sharpness in case it's not focusing correctly. But right now everything is on auto settings. And one of the things I did notice is that in the low light settings, which it's doing quite well right now, sometimes the focus can be a little bit finicky so what I could do in order to change that is turn autofocus off and then just turn manual focus on and right about here looks beautiful. So that way it's not kind of like shaking, especially if I turn all my lights off like this. Sometimes it will freak out if I turn on autofocus then it might just kind of go back and forth into what it wants to focus on. But right now, this is with absolutely no key light. This is pretty dark in here besides my background lights. And yet we're still pulling a very good image, especially if I take the autofocus off and I change it back to manual, kind of drag it over here. I feel like that's pretty decent. I feel like this is pretty good. And then you can also go in and change the exposure as well if you want to turn off the auto exposure. Oh my God. This is how actually dark it is. 
So it just goes to show how crazy the makeup gain in terms of the exposure and lighting is to re-brighten up your shot without it looking bad. And also it keeps the frames per second. There's not a delay or anything, which looks dope. But let me turn the light back on and then change these back to auto and give it a couple seconds to calibrate. You can see it's actually doing this all automatically. Hands are off the keyboard and it's just going to go back to the best settings on your room settings, meaning how lit your room is essentially. And the reason it's able to do this is because of its tiny sensor, which essentially allows in more light light and colors while it has two different ISOs, which essentially just allows it to look better in low light settings, which not a lot of other webcams do. And like I said earlier, this is super compatible with Twitch and other sort of streaming platforms because we're streaming at 1080p. So this is a really good budget option. But let's take a look at the cheaper alternative, even cheaper than this one, which is the Meet SE, which is this bad boy right here, which you might notice it's not a PTZ webcam. So we'll see how that works in terms of tracking us around the room, because obviously it's a little brick. It is so tiny, by the way. And I picked this cute little green color which not a lot of webcams offer. But anyways, let's check it out. So this is the new Meet SE, the cheaper webcam, and low key, it doesn't look that much different than the Tiny. One big difference between these two webcams is that this is not a PTZ camera, meaning it's not on a gimbal. So instead of being able to use this and track us around the room, we actually have to use auto framing, which zooms in and then will keep us auto framed in the image. So if I go and click on medium, zoom in a little bit, then I can use this and kind of zoom in and round and track this little spot here. You can even go narrow and zoom in more and then you'll be able to do that. But if we go back to wide and then turn on the auto framing, it's going to do the same thing, but just automatically. So we have upper body. Now, if I go over here, it's going to follow me until it can anymore. That's because it's not on a little gimbal, which means it can't turn its actual self, but instead keep us in frame. So if you don't plan on walking around your room like I was, like an idiot, and you just plan on moving left and right a little bit, maybe back up smidge, then this is a really solid option, especially because this webcam is $30 cheaper than the Tiny SE. And the cool thing is, is that it's actually magnetic, so you can just magnetically mount it to the actual mount and just snaps on. It also has this little privacy cover that you can use, so that way you know no one's spying on you. Because low-key, I get kind of weirded out at that thought, don't you? But let's test out this webcam and see how it actually performs. Especially in low-light setting, I'm gonna turn off all of the lights and you still get a pretty clear image. I'm actually shocked. So if we go to the actual image side, you can see we have all the things on auto, auto focus. So if we needed to, we could always turn that off, change the manual focus right about here. I think that looks good. And if you really wanted to, you could also turn up the sharpness to help. You don't necessarily need to. I really don't mess with a lot of the regular image settings here, as you can see here, I'm just gonna reset it, but rather just the focus and exposure. And if I turn off the auto exposure again, you'll see how dark it is in my actual room. So bringing this back on, it lightens up my room pretty well without introducing lag, too much pixelation or anything like that, which a lot of the older webcams honestly sucked at doing. You would pretty much need perfect lighting in order to actually have the best settings on your webcam, whereas this allows you to be a lot more lenient and not have a professional lighting setup. Now, obviously, if you can, it's good to have a cheap little key light, you know, cost 20 bucks on Amazon or just find a lamp around your house and point it towards you because that makes the shot 10 times better and makes the webcam work less because the less stress we can put on the webcam, the better image quality we're going to get. So I'm going to put the autofocus back on. And like I said earlier, this can do 1080p 100 frames per second, but 720p 150 frames per second. That's insane. I've never heard of a webcam being able to do this before. I'm not going to use it, but thought it was kind of cool. As you can see here, the focus did go a little bit out, which is why I feel like with these webcams, you might want to stick with the manual focus because that way it's not going to constantly be changing on you and you know you're going to be in focus the whole time. Just a little thing to keep an eye out for. And since this is 1080p, this is a great compatibility for Twitch and other streaming services. You also got the gesture controls. So if we want to use the auto framing and test this out, hold up our hand. Now it'll follow me around the little zoom shot that we have. You could also zoom in and hold up the loser sign like this. We'll zoom in right there. And then if I wanted to track me or, you know, auto frame with the zoom, we got that going there. They do also have the ability to use portrait mode as well. So if you go into the bottom left corner here, you can change the preview mode from landscape to portrait, X this out. And then you're also able to change this in there and cause you can rotate it like this. And then you'd be able to rotate the actual camera because it's that magnetic mount. Then we have a nice portrait version if you want to live stream to TikTok or any other vertical platform, which makes it quite versatile. But let me put this back on the side and let's see how they compare side to side. So this is what they look like side to side. I have the meat 
SE on the left, and then I have the tiny SE on the right. As you can see, there really doesn't seem to be too many differences in terms of the actual composition of the shot, which is insane because one is $30 cheaper, which is almost half off. So really you're paying for that extra PTZ capabilities, which I think kind of is worth it. But if you're really balling on a budget, then you might want to go with the meat because the meat comes in way more colors, honestly, which I know is stupid, but I really like it. But these are both the absolute default settings. I haven't changed anything. So I want to show you guys what they both look like in the low light settings, as well as testing the autofocus. So we'll try holding up a couple boxes first. So I'm going to hold up this box here, see how they compare down, up, down, up and we're gonna try this one as well so we're gonna go up give it a second to kind of go there down up and then down and then up and so now let's take my little key light off see how they perform you can see they both essentially look very similar and i'm going to turn on both of the auto framings and the ai tracking for both of these and we'll move around a little bit see how they kind of compare they both do a good job of tracking obviously one is on a gimbal and the other is not so you have to take that in consideration and then if we also want to do this in low light settings as well hold this up with the auto tracking not bad one more time really not too shabby and that's considering this is in low light with the auto tracking and auto framing on so these are not optimal conditions but instead if we turn the light on we take both of these trackings off we'll reset them then overall they both really kick butt especially for the price points of seventy dollars and a hundred dollars in the united states so if you're interested in grabbing one of these i'll leave them both linked in the description down below and if you guys are ready to check out some more streaming gear for your setup then i'll watch this playlist right i guess here in the middle of the screen you can binge that playlist of all the streaming gear i've tested. But my name's Cody, and I'll see you in the next one.